How to download IPA files in 2025? Method number one, we're gonna use a tool called IPA tool. You can search and go to the GitHub page, which have listed all the detailed instructions. You can see it supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Well, you can click on the GitHub release to download version. Now, since we're on a Mac, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna install it. You can just use the home brew. The brew command will install it. Now I have already installed it. You can see the version is 2.20. You can also use the upgrade commands if you haven't used it for a while. Now let's see what we can do to download this IPA file. First thing first, you need to authenticate. Okay, so we're gonna use the IPA tool auth login dash dash email with your iCloud or Apple ID and then dash dash password to provide your password and once we do that you will still get prompted for your MFA if you have that set up it's just all happening within these terminals and let's do IPA tool let's first search the app bundle ID because for us to be able to download it we need to use the bundle ID so when we do a search for example, we're looking for a workday and you just type IPA to search workday and it will give you any app that with that name. Now, once we know the workday bundle ID, which is the first one, we're going to use the dash B to indicate the bundle ID and we're going to download it. Now, if you haven't purchased the app previously, you can also use the dash dash purchase flag to purchase that. Let's do IPA tool, download. We go dash B with the bundle ID, and then we'll do purchase. Now, even I've already purchased it, but even you already purchased it, it's not gonna break it. So we just put dash dash purchase here. Dash O means where you wanna output the file. Now, if you don't provide a directory, you will just download the file under your home folder. Okay, looks like we have finished the download, but we have received an error, something to do with the zip. So let's see. Okay, we can see the IPA file has been downloaded. Then there is additional temp, pro temp file being created. And I think it tried to zip the file and had an error. Never mind. let's just manually change this IPA file to zip and let's unzip it to see what's inside. So you, you double click it and create a folder. Let's open that folder. Now under every IPA file, when you unzip it, there is a payload folder where are all the related files is for the app. Now you can't see what's in this folder, but you can right click it and just go show package contents. That should give you everything under this app. What we are interested in is the info.plist, which will give you the basic configurations for this file. And I'll explain later on why do we need this file and how we use it. Method number two, we will use Apple Configurator. Now, Apple Configurator is a Mac only software and you can get it from the Mac store. Once you have the app installed, connect your phone and allow the connections and you can see your phone in this Apple configurator software next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on add to add the app you want to now even though I already have worked the app on my phone that's 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 okay just click on add again and look for the work the app once you've found the app let's click on add so what is happening now is the Apple configurator will download this app first and then push to your phone now we can ignore the part that's going to push to your phone. You can just discard that. What we wanted is to be able to see this package that's been downloaded to a temporary or cached folder for Apple Configurator on the Mac. And then we can extract the IPA file. Okay, so here you can ignore this prompt. You can skip it or you can just ignore it. Now let's look for the folder where this IPA file is. Uh, I'm running on Tahoe on different Mac OS, you might be seeing a different folder path. 
So for that, you're gonna Google it and look for um, Ask ChatGPT, figure out what's the right path. Now I'm gonna post my path for the Tahoe in our description, but this is the path. All right, so we're gonna go to this path and open it up and see whether we can find this cached IPA files. So let's click on Finder and then go to Folder. We'll paste the folder path in and it will be under temporary under the temporary items go to the mobile apps and as you can see here if you this is the first folder first file we downloaded so it will be under here okay now we find our ipa file same thing again you go right click and go show package content maybe let's copy it to desktop first we'll drag the file to the desktop Change the file extension to zip. Double click to unzip it. So it will create a folder on your desktop. Now that will be exact same folder structure like we see in the method one. Now go to the payload and find your app. Now you can right click and show the payload content and find the right file. How do you locate a custom URL scheme for iOS app? Now, every iOS app has URL scheme, or most of the time they will use their custom URL scheme. What is the URL scheme for? This is a protocol that lets you, when you click on the files that relate to the app, it will make sure it will open with your native app without going to the browser. That's why, or that's how the iOS app make this happen. Now in a specific use case, that if you are into administrator and you are using something called app protection policy. Now when your app is not supporting the Intune protection policy, but you are forcing it to use managed edge browser to complete a single sign-on, the access token after authentication need to be passed back from your managed edge browser to your unmanaged mobile app. This won't be allowed because of the data protection policies in the Intune app protection policy. So to make that happen, you need to make a exemption to allow this specific token passing back to your unmanaged app. And this is something we call data exemption under the app protection policy. To use that, you need to find the URL scheme. So let's right click onto this um, info. We'll open in the VS Code, we can see that clearly. Now let's search URL scheme. It'll be somewhere here. So remember we said in the app protection policy for Android, we use bundle IDs. But for iOS, we need to use this URL scheme. As you can see, it can be anything. For Workday, it is called Workday plus HTTPS. Some app might use something very similar to its own bundle ID, but it's really depending on the developers where they're gonna use it. And this is the very setting you will use in the app protection policy when you wanna make exemptions. And I will show you a screenshot of what does it look like. That's it, hope you learned something and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.